Good afternoon, everyone. Time for another member update. Now, this is the euro and the Japanese yen crossed over each other just to show you the attempt to devalue these currencies that uh, I believe personally the United States is forcing to put strength into the dollar. Why they want to do that, I'm not so sure. But uh, there's definitely a push to devalue the European currency and the Japanese currency. Now, we talked about the Russian currency as well. And that seems to have stabilized now that the Russian Central Bank has not only defended it, but has done a number of other things, including raising interest rates and, and stuff like that. So it doesn't appear that the Russians are going to back down but they're going to defend their currency and they're going to leave the ability to trade that currency, leave it in the Forex markets. So you can see the tremendous spike here. We're down now to 54.722 and that's a big difference from where we were all the way up at nearly 80 to 1 to the dollar. Now we're nowhere near where we were when the crisis began with Russia and the Ukraine and Crimea, etc. You can see that the ruble was about 34, but nothing like the recent devaluation that we've seen. Now I pointed out last time that the Chinese currency appears to be affected by their statement that they may be bailing out the Russians, or at least using foreign exchange reserves to come in and, and bolster that. So you can see now that the we're still in a rally phase here where the dollar is rallying against the Chinese currency, so it hasn't turned around. So that's very interesting. Not really sure what it means. I think it's all going to shape up at some point, probably next spring, where we'll get an idea of where that's going. Of course, crude oil had a very mild bounce. You can see that it's still down around 57. That's a really very low price historically. And then of course today, while we're still trading, we're getting a record close out of the Dow Industrial Average. Now with the currency depreciation that we've seen, that's to be expected. Those have gone hand in hand. Whenever the uh, euro has started to rally against the dollar or whenever the yen has started to rally against the dollar then it, it seems like the US stock market begins to correct then as soon as that's turned around and they start pumping the dollar again by pushing down those currencies then the stock market takes off again that's that's approximately this point here so the stock market is trying to close into new highs now, percentage-wise, that's really not that big of a deal because the Dow has been me meandering with the top of around 14,000 that it made a very, very long time ago. So you can see back in here, 14,000 back before the financial crisis. So as far as percentage gains, that's not really that high. You can also see a Dow of 12,000 back at the dot-com um, crash before that crash. So really percentage-wise, it hasn't gained that much, certainly hasn't gained anywhere near gold and silver half in the same time frame. Uh, it hasn't even doubled. So although people are saying that the market is very, very strong and this is an incredible thing and all this stuff, it's really not that much of a performance by the Dow. So let's get over to the main story. Before we do that, I wanted to show you behind the headlines here. We had a headline number come in that was the GDP. Now this is a chart from Zero Hedge about this revised GDP. We all know that it came in at 5%. They did a little bit of digging into the numbers and you can see here that 12.1% billion dollars in the revision turns out to be Obamacare. And then you can see behind that financial services and non-durable goods. None of this is a real economy stuff. 
So we have a, a service-based economy. The GDP is completely fake, but they can use that as an excuse to rally stocks and uh, they push down the currencies and, and rally stocks. So before we get to the numismatic review, now I'm going to be doing a review of the Numi coins, my favorites, and try to gauge or assess their relative performance. And before we do that, I want to show you, here's a Zero Hedge article that came out about silver. And we've got a lot of people crying in their beer about silver. You can see this ad man here. Uh, he tells them to F off. Investing in thousands of ounces of silver back in 2008, 2009 was the worst financial mistake I ever made. Now I'm stuck with a bunch of useless metal that is worth less than what I paid for it. Not really sure how it could be worth less if you bought it 2008, 2009, considering that silver was as low as 850. But we'll take his word for it. The silver pump and dump scam is over, Zero Hedge. Let it go. So there's one. This next guy says, I'm with you. I have 10,000 ounces I bought right, 11 to $13 price average. Can't sell it, have to hold it, don't care anymore. If this bleep ever passes $30, $40, $50, I will be selling all the way up. Trust me, I understand fiat currency. I will sell this and buy more land. And then, of course, someone says, so you're going to trade your silver for something the tax man can take away. So there's a lot of a lot of crying, a lot of moaning. And, of course, we're long-term silver stackers, but we're interested in stacking something that is going to appreciate in the short term as well as in the long term. And that's why we try to follow the numismatic or the semi-numismatic coins. So let's start off with the... I'm going to start off with the Elephant series. Now, this is this is one that I've covered in the past. It's a very interesting series. I, I'm not going to review the history of it, but just briefly, it's a Bavarian mint, one of the oldest mints, if not the oldest mint in Europe. And it was a Zambian coin before 2005, I believe. We'll see that when we get to Atmex. And it's not an official Somalian coin because... For one thing, there isn't an official Somalian government. So how can you have an official coin when you don't even have a government? But nevertheless, it has uh, gone through a lot of controversy and it is a legitimate coin. It, it's put out by that Bavarian Mint and it's very it's highly collectible. In fact, before examining this, I, I didn't think that this coin would have performed as well as it has. But it really has been an amazing performer. So what I've done here is, and you can see that I've only taken it back to 2010. The coin goes back to 2005, but we'll see when we look at Atmex that the price gets crazy and it gets really dicey to get any numbers. So we're just going to take it back to 2010, and we really could only get two eBay prices for that year. So what I, what I did was I got prices. I just went from most recent. So I didn't try to do any kind of in-depth analysis, statistical analysis. This is all just anecdotal, really, information. But when we add it up and look at it, some trends start to emerge. So let's start off with this elephant coin. What I've done is I've taken samples of the prices and then I've tried to get 10. Where I couldn't get 10, I took as many as I could get and then I took the average. So you can see that there's the various years here of the coin and there's the prices on eBay and then there's the average price on eBay and then there's the store price and that's going to be primarily Atmex. Although they're sold in some other places, they're very hard to find anywhere else. So we're, we're going to use Atmex as the price. So you can see the 2010 elephant, we got two of those coming in with an average of 71. Now. We have to make the distinction between numismatic and semi-numismatic. Now, I don't know where the breakdown or the line is going to be, but when a coin is trading at four times the silver price that this trade is, is trading at, because we've got about $15 silver and a $71 coin. So at some point, you have to say that the coin is strictly numismatic. It's not even semi-numismatic. I think 
probably three times the silver price is going to be that range. So the first coin here, and we'll see that the ones before 2010 also have a tremendous numismatic value. 2010 coming in at $71. We can see 2011 average price comes in at $38. 2012 comes in at $33. 2013 comes in at $32. And the 2014 comes in at $25. I didn't do the 2015. You can get those for around $21, something like that. Now, the other thing is the store price. You can see this is what they cost. If you were to try to buy them from AppMex, you got 80 bucks for the 2010, 36 bucks for the 2011, 41 dollars for the 2012, 38 dollars for the 2013, and 21 dollars for the 2014. So a couple of anomalous findings here. One is that the price of the 2011 is actually lower than the 2012 and other than that it's a pretty steady fall when you're looking at eBay so eBay is a pretty steady fall now the the other things that you want to keep in mind that are going to affect the prices on these series is you have to always remember that what was the price of silver when these coins were available because there was a spike in 2011 all the way above 40 from between 40 to to 50 dollars an ounce now the big question is going to be what year was available at that time and is someone taking a loss on those coins so that's something you always have to keep in mind because my guess is that most of the people who stack these coins aren't willing to sell them at a loss and these numbers kind of sort of bear that out. Although you can see that uh, the 2012 for $33, that there may be some in there where people are taking a loss. Certainly the uh, 2011 at $38, anybody who bought it for more than that is taking a loss. But I highly doubt that there are that many. So let's go over and look at AppMex and the elephant series there and what we've done is we've put them in order from low to high now here you can see I was wrong on the 2015 here it is at $19 so you can pick that up for $19 that's a real deal if you think about how this coin has performed now it has performed very well on Atmex it's also performed very well on eBay so it, it it's a winner in both categories now these are just going to be the prices that I saw put them in on the spreadsheet but you can see as we go up in price here I, I ignored it. any kind of gilded or privy coins anything special such as this one here the horse privy or the snake privy I didn't do any uh, inclusion on those just the straight year for the one ounce coin strictly one ounce now I'm probably going to do once I get through the main one ounce coins, I'm probably going to go through and do a review of the half ounce coins. Hopefully I can complete that before the end of the year. So you can see here's your 2010 coming in here at $80. Right behind it's the 2009 at $90. And you're going to be shocked to see how high these prices go. And I'm not really sure what the reason is if there just weren't that many minted or if they're very hard to get. You can see $120 now for the 2008 that's clearly a numismatic coin only here's hundred and thirty dollars for the 2007 and by the way I did check these on eBay and they actually are going on eBay for number something like this here's the 2004 for hundred and fifty dollars here's the 2006 is out of stock and here's the 2005 Somali one ounce elephant for a hundred and ninety dollars a coin and yes eBay does reflect that so the elephant series definitely seems to be a potential straight numismatic play how that impacts tax laws and capital gains and uh, whether there's a potential confiscation whether it's considered silver uh, those are all questions I don't know the answer to, but obviously as the price 
becomes many, many multiples of the silver price. We're not really even talking about silver bullion anymore. We're talking just about a very rare coin that happens to be made out of silver. So let's go and look at the other series that I did here. And this is the Koala series. So this is, this is one that I've collected as well. And this was kind of interesting to me. I thought that the prices would be higher. They weren't as high as I thought they would be. And this one seems to be impacted by maybe the, the price of silver at the time when the coins were available as well. So you can see the first column. We've got an average price of 67 for the 2007 Koala. Now you have to remember this is the first year of the series and it wasn't the lowest mintage. Actually the next year was the lowest mintage. We can see that reflected in the average price. We get $67 for the first year, $69 average price for 2008. We get a big drop in 2009 all the way down to $29. Now that might be because of a glut of those coins. I know I bought mine in the fall of 2008 at the very depths of the financial crisis when silver was eight fifty and nine dollars so there may have been a large number of people who did that as well now you can see 2010 is higher at thirty five dollars a good six dollars higher then we start to drop back down in the series back down to thirty dollars in 2011 twenty five dollars in 2012 twenty six dollars 2013 and $23 in 2014. So with the Koala series, we seem to have a drop off. Um, I, you can get them now for 2021. We, you have a drop off or a premium that's about $4 or so, three or $4, and that kind of just stays for the most recent years. We don't get a boost until we get to 2011, and again, that may be because of how high the silver price was at the time and people aren't really willing to part with them waiting for higher silver prices. So the Koala series did not turn out to be nearly as big of a success as I thought it would be. And that's surprising. We're going to look also at Kookaburras and half ounce coins. And of course the Lunar series, I'm going to go into depth on that one. So here's the store price for the Koalas. You've got 76 for the 2007 you've got 92 and I did a lot of searching around had to use some way back machines some of them had prices others didn't but uh, that rare 2008 coin around 92 we got $45 is what you can buy them for in the store for the 2009 and the 2010 so we don't get that drop off until about 2011 so you can see that the coal is starting to appreciate it's as it dries up in these earlier years uh, in bulk amounts available to places like Atmex and Provident. We're not yet seeing it reflected in the eBay price, but we are seeing it reflected in the store price. Then we get the drop off here, 25, 28, 24, and all the way down to 20 for the 2014 Koala. So you can still get them fairly cheap, but you, you have the same sort of thing with the stores where once you're a year or two out, you're going to get about a $5 boost. And then at some point, when it's a number of years back, you're going to get a bigger boost than that. So that's the conclusion of it. I'm not really sure what it all means. I do know that there's definite value in buying the semi-numies, which at some, at some point in time can actually go from being semi-numies to numies. If you think about people who buy and collect these. If I'm correct that as people continue to stack silver and more and more people become interested in stacking silver, and it, again, it's just a tiny, tiny number of people that are silver stackers. If that number increases, then there's going to be more and more people who just want one of these coins, whether it's one year of the elephant, one year of the koala, whatever the coin is, there's going to be more people who want one coin that's going to put pressure on the prices. So even though we don't have high prices in the fairly recent past issues, that very well could balloon up just like it has for the earlier, because more and more people are going to be coming in to the game. So obviously, the earlier you started on this, the better off you are. But it's not too late to start, in my opinion, when 
the percentage of people who are stacking silver is still so tiny. And we'll talk to you next time.